Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. I don't know if you can tell but my background is slightly different. I'm messing around with some new lights that I got that can do all different colours so I'm hoping it'll show up. I'm trying to look in the little viewfinder to see how much you can see but I have a red and a green one. I wanted to get all Christmassy and uh, <laughs> they're, they're changing colour ones so you can set it to whatever colour you want. But it looks a little dark maybe in the background. I'm going to have to play around with my various lights to get the right setup happening. But hopefully there's a little bit of a Christmas vibe happening. I can't. I can kind of see a bit of green up there and maybe some red. I don't know. When I had all my lights on you couldn't see the colour really. So I've tried turning some of the other lights off. But now it's like it seems kind of dark. So anyway... <laughs> Just thought I would share my lighting conundrum with you all. Uh, so today I wanted to make the Christmas decoration from the bits and pieces that we got in the Christmas box. I don't know what I'm doing guys if I'm honest. I went through that box again just to sort of refresh my memory of what we're working with here. And uh, nothing was sort of really jumping out at me straight away. I've got a few possible options, some things maybe I'll do. I think what we need to do is have a look at all the bits and pieces that I have. So I might try and I'll either take you down onto the table or I might actually do uh, a Lauren cam. Um, <laughs> I don't know, material cam? I don't know what to call it. I might film with my phone to show you what all the bits and pieces look like and then we'll work out from there. All right, not to blind you, but that is the light that I have. Uh, I'll link it down below in case anyone is interested in the lights that I've got here. They're just a nice compact LED and, you know, you can set the brightness up and down. It's got colour settings, all of that. You can do warm, cool, light, whatever. So I'm still, this is the first time I've used them. Right, so we've got all sorts of stuff on the ground. We have, it's kind of strewn about because there's just so much, but uh, there is a look into the box. Some bits and pieces in there, feathers, styrofoam. We've got lace, beads. We have feathers. There's a bunch of different things. It's almost like, having all these options has made it even harder to choose what I'm going to do. <laughs> now I definitely am interested in making something out of one of these rings, like making a little wreath or something like that. But I think for this video we're going to do something different. And I think we're going to do a bauble. Now I wanted to sort of keep up a tradition of making a Christmas decoration for the tree every year, which is why I'm going for the bauble. I figure it'd be good to make something and make something a bit fantasy as well for the tree. So that's what we're going to go with. Now I was having a think about how I want to decorate the bauble and my concept at the moment is that I want to have some sort of goblin bauble. I'm thinking of having some elements of decoration and some elements of goblin in the one bauble. Uh, so I think we're just going to get started because there's potentially a lot to go. <laughs> there's a lot to do uh, to get the concept in my head and then um, I'll be able to better explain what my concept is rather than to try and have you picture it on this blank bauble. <laughs> Righto guys, so what I'm thinking of doing is splitting the bauble up into eight equal segments and then having decorative work on one of the segments and then goblin faces on the next decorative goblin faces. That's the concept at least. <laughs> Will this work? I don't know. And how am I going to do nice even segments you ask? Good question. I'm not sure about that either. Uh, I've got a couple of different things that potentially I could use. I've got my little protractor set so that could potentially help me get the segments. Or I am also thinking about putting some string and using that in a way to kind of even out the segments and then measuring along here. I don't know. <laughs> There's options. So we'll see how we go with that. Uh, hopefully this all comes together nicely. Mm. 
so what I did was use my protractor to split up the segments into equal eight segments and I measured that at the top and bottom of the uh, bauble but then I needed to be able to draw a line between those two markings and I was trying to use string but what I found was when I was moving the string around it would bend in certain spots and so it wasn't the most accurate way to connect those two lines up. So instead I used a measuring tape and ruled around the um, circumference to get an idea of exactly how much distance needed to be between each segment at the midpoint there and that helped me line up everything so that I got relatively equal looking segments. Now if you guys have seen me sculpt uh, goblins before on the picture frames then you've seen me do this technique before. Um, so I'm using a two-part epoxy and I guess when you're sculpting a face it's or well, when you sculpt anything really it's about thinking about where to remove clay or add clay um, or just to form the clay that you have. What I find with these is I like to push in where the eye sockets are going to be and around where the nose would be and um, you know, I might sculpt a little bit around sort of the forehead. But then I'm adding clay when it comes to things like the nose, the ears and the eyeballs. And when it comes to goblins, they're usually quite wrinkly, um, quite grotesque. They have exaggerated features. So you can kind of go to town and, you know, really play up the various features, adding big noses, different shaped noses, adding lots of wrinkles. Um, if you add a lot of like forehead wrinkles, maybe crow's feet. And then maybe you might have some exaggerated mouths and things like that. Now I wanted to outline each of the segments with some beads and I had this trim thing here. Um, I did try using super glue at first, but bad idea. It really did eat into it a bit much. I find when you do the eyeballs, it really helps when you um, press in the iris with a little ball tool because it also keeps the eyeball in place by doing that and on occasional goblins I added these little Santa hats I just liked the idea of a little goblin with a, a little Santa hat similar thing that I did with the picture frame which is to uh, and it's very Brian Froud in style by uh, really grouping a lot of goblins together in that segment and um, filling in lots of the gaps Well, I've got some little goblin guys on my bauble, but the thing is, <laughs> I did this one first and I added the ears and noses and things, and that was a bit of a mistake because then when I went to sculpt other things and I had it sitting down this way, some of the ears and noses broke off, <laughs> which is not what you want. So I think what I'm going to do, I decided after that, uh, you'll notice a lack of ears and noses <laughs> on things after that. Uh, I just sort of made a shape where the nose will end up because I don't want them all falling off. So I think what I'm going to do is do the rest of the bauble first and then finish off with the ears and noses and whatnot because that way 
they're less likely to break off hopefully because I'll I'll not have them sitting you know moving around all the time anyway that's the theory uh so I think I'm just gonna put like all sorts of beads and things in here I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try and use beads and trimmings and all sorts of stuff that I got in the box I really want to stick to the only things I'm adding onto this are clay glue and paint but other than that I've got to use stuff from the box so I'm just trying to pull out bits and pieces now that uh, came in the box that I can fill up these alternate little segments with also can you see the hole that my glue gouged in it I started off using the super glue and I had a feeling it might eat into the foam it's been I haven't really used super glue with foam before uh, I just haven't really worked with the two together but you know foam styrofoam is very sensitive to a lot of things and they, it can eat into it and yeah sure enough it did and at first I thought oh I can live with the amount it eats in because it was eating this nice little kind of channel for the beads to sit into and I thought if I could um, control the glue well enough that I can like make it only gouge out as much as I kind of want and, and just have a little channel for beads, then it'd be fine. But then occasionally it would just pull up and sink right in like that. So yeah, I'm not going to use the super glue anymore because that's a pain in the butt. Really probably should just use PVA glue. But there's part of me that doesn't want to do that because when you're filming a video, you just want things to, you know, move along quickly because this is already going to take so long. And if I have to wait for drying times for things like PVA, it just adds so much extra time onto a project. But I might have to succumb to either. I might try a bit of tacky glue. I don't know how that will react. It might also be an issue. I don't know. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use probably the PVA because even the hot glue was, you know, causing some, uh, like, eating into it because of the heat. Not too much. It was okay. It was better. But I still, like, if I'm doing a big whole lot of it, it could probably eat in a fair bit. So I really am trying now to avoid that from happening. I thought it would look nice to put this uh, decorative star that came in the box on the top and bottom of the bauble and that helped hide the ends of some of those beaded uh, strands that I put on before. Now on the segments that are going to be just like beads and so forth I've decided to edge those with the thicker strand of beads as well. I really want to highlight where the segment starts and begins for each you know the beaded section and the goblin section. I ended up using a tacky glue for this which worked out really well uh, and it just sticky enough for you to stick on things like small beads and sequins and things like that. It's not the strongest of glues but perfect for this type of application. And I'm really trying to think about the texture of it and think past the colour which can be tricky, <laughs> but I know that I'm going to paint this later. So I'm just looking to create an interesting texture with the beads rather than think about the colors going together. Now, when it comes to seed beads, I did use a PVA glue here because uh, it allows you to maneuver the beads around a lot longer. And I really wanted to fill up this section with seed beads that were right next to each other and filling up this entire space um, as you know packed in as I could and tacky glue just wouldn't really allow you to do that with seed beads it would be much more difficult uh, so having that PVA and being able to move the beads around so that they're sitting uh, like next to each other with the holes facing out um, it's much easier with this type of glue and then I just used a skewer to move the beads around Now if you liked the colour of the beads you were using you wouldn't necessarily have to paint this, you could leave it as is. But I wasn't entirely happy with the tones of colours in this. It wasn't quite Christmassy, it was 
not not the right greens and reds I was after. Now you can see I'm going back in and adding those ears and noses. And <laughs> Now that I've done all that beading, uh, there's less chance for them to break because I'm not moving the bauble around so much. Now I could have done this paint one of two ways. I could have painted it black and then say dry brushed the paint on top of that to get this kind of look, this antique -y look. But I decided I really like the colour of this uh, gold spray paint that I have. It's like a chromey gold. So I used that and then I did washes of black over the top. So you would do like a wash of black acrylic over the top of the spray paint and then rub it back with a cloth. That way it only accumulates in the crevices. Now I did want to differentiate the segments. The beaded segment from the goblin segment so I did different colors for them if I was doing this again I probably would have made the beaded segment more uniform and more symmetrical because I found the texture of it was a bit too busy and there wasn't anything really grounding the design so I ended up going back over some of the beads with a brighter gold um, as you can see there and that just gave some grounding to the design. Uh, just made that really stand out and you could then more clearly see where the segment started and ended. And I felt like that really helped to pull the design together. And there you go guys. I love the fact that you don't necessarily realise there's goblins on this until you look cl more closely at it. And it's got that really antique -y look to it. I'm really happy with how this came out. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of this type of whimsical, creative, fantasy stuff from myself. Have a Merry Christmas. And I'll see the rest of you next time in Feywood. Bye guys.